Hey everybody, today I'm going to be doing a shop tour. Now I'm really excited to do this shop tour, I've never done one before, uh, so uh, it'll be great to show you guys what my shop looks like uh, and how I get work done down here. Now, right now I'm in the middle of a couple of big projects, so uh, I can't upload those for quite a while, they're still uh, a ways away from being finished. Uh, so I wanted to make a video uh, uh, to hold you over from the last project to my upcoming uh, projects that I'm going to upload. Now, uh, I'm really excited to show you down here, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. Now, my shop takes up the unfinished side of the basement. Now, we have two sides. Over here, right now, I'm on the finished side, uh, and through this door is my workshop and the unfinished side. Now, you can see this sign right there. Uh, I did that on the laser at the school. Uh, and up here's the stairs. Uh, we've got some built-ins for the TV over here, uh, and the shop's right behind that door. So let's go in there next. I'll give you one more look over here. There's the door that we were just uh, b right behind uh, and looking from. Right there's my snowmaker, uh, if you're interested in that. Uh, here's the refrigerator. Uh, over there is storage underneath the stairs. That's the stairs uh, going up there. Uh, and then just pan around over here uh, to the workshop. Alright, now I'm going to start off at the main workbench. Down here is pretty much some main storage for me. Now over there I have my shop vac. That's the small shop vac that I use for cleaning the floors uh, and anything that's not directly from the tools. So I use that to clean the uh, workbenches as well. Uh, underneath there, the rest of that's really just scrap stuff. I've got some scrap uh, wood there. I've got some PVC vinegar, I don't really know why I have that down here, uh, but s other scrap stuff over on that side. Uh, up here, that's kind of my project shelf. Uh, I put uh, projects there uh, that I'm working on, and if I'm working on multiple projects and I need to stow one away, I'll put that right there. Now that is the bench project that I'm working on. So those on the bottom are the legs, and on top that's just some scrap from that project. Uh, now, I'm sorry, there's some ping pong balls bouncing upstairs. Uh, but anyway, uh, over here on that shelf there, there's uh, my DeWalt drill case, which I don't have the drill in, but I just store it under there. My Dremel saw max and some cheap drill drill bits, and there's also a little cheap soldering iron under there. I don't use that that much though. Now I'm going to come up here and show you some of these drawers. Uh, now this drawer is pretty much miscellaneous. I've got a socket set, some extra safety glasses, some cheap ones, um, some sandpaper, just a ton of miscellaneous stuff. I've got some extra shirts for applying wipe on poly, a little sanding block. Uh, that's just kind of miscellaneous stuff. And over here, I open this drawer quite often. I've got a multimeter, a chalk line, a little tiny socket set, my uh, band clamp, and then most importantly, I've got screws and nails in here. Now I need to replenish my supply, there's not much. Uh, I've also got a couple random orbital uh, sanding pads in here, um, but that's about it for in here. And I've also got some little uh, tools for the Dremel. Uh, well, for the not, it's not actually a Dremel, but it's a rotary tool. All right, now next, this is my workbench top. Uh, I usually have a uh, one of those sticky like or the not they're not sticky, but the uh, the grip pads for like shelving and stuff. Now I usually have that on top, but it recently started to get really sticky to the point where it would stick to any wood that I set on it. So that was really annoying. I thought it was wet finish at first that I put on there and it stuck. Uh, but it was actually, it happened to another piece of wood that had been finished for over a year. Uh, so uh, that was kind of annoying. I got rid of that. I'm probably going to get another one of those. Uh, on the back there, I use a lot of those tools. I've got a, uh, multiple squares, a tape measure, some chisels, my little router plane that I made. Um, I've got uh, some screwdrivers, hammer, all that sort of stuff uh, is right up there. So that's really handy. Off to this side, you can see I have a little finishing station. It's just a little piece of uh, this paper stuff taped down. Uh, and uh, I'll move the camera over there just so you can see that a little bit better. But you can see I've got some wipe on polyurethane there now. I'm finishing a project uh, for my grandpa. Uh, I made this. Uh, I, my grandpa came to my school and I showed him the, uh, the laser that we have there. And I laser etched him 
um, that for his project that I'll talk a little bit more about in a minute. Now, uh, that's about it for the top here. Uh, I'm going to move up a little bit, and on top you can see I have a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Over there, um, I have a little glove uh, compartment thing. You can pull the gloves out for finishing. Got some dusk masks, uh, straight edge, and then underneath those gloves uh, is a little area for cut up uh, t-shirts for the wipe on poly. Now, I'm going to swing you up here. Now there you can see my clamp collection. Um, I have a pretty good collection. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I gotta make some more clamp racks. You can see there's one over there um, that I made uh, in a project video and that came out really good so I'm really happy with that one. Uh, it works really well uh, and I think I want to make some more for those other clamps there and for those small clamps there. Uh, so that's about my clamp collection, and then also right over there you can see one of the lights that I use for filming. Alright, now next over in this corner, uh, you can see I have a lot of miscellaneous stuff. I've got some miscellaneous stuff over here, I've got some PVC pipe, miscellaneous screws and wiring and stuff like that. I've got a little tool belt, which I don't really use a whole lot, uh, but it's nice to have if I ever do any outdoor projects. Uh, up there is some more miscellaneous stuff, hot glue gun, uh, tape. Uh, PVC cutters and hanging over there you can see a rotary tool. Now the rotary tool actually comes in handy. Uh, it really works well and I've got a little uh, windy hose attachment thing on it uh, so it just hangs up there and I turn it on and I've got a little station for that uh, right down there as you can see. Uh, so that comes in handy and also one thing I didn't mention is my uh, number four hand plane which I use uh, pretty frequently to uh, square up edges to put on the table saw because I don't have a jointer. Alright now down here you can see my drill press. Now my drill press gets used quite a bit. Uh, it was given to me for free. It's very small. Uh, that's my biggest complaint about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it does work. It was quite neglected when I got it. It sat in a barn for years, but I did give it a new paint job, clean up some of the rust, and now it works pretty good. So I can't complain I got it for free. Uh, now up here, uh, you can see some shelves that I built out of reclaimed 2x4s, and these both uh, work really well. Uh, they are two separate units. Uh, they appear to be one, but they're two separate units, uh, and they're hanging uh, from the ceiling with some chains on this smaller one here and some rope on the bigger one. Now uh, I've got some glue, all that sort of stuff over there, uh, and over here I've got some of my drills, which really only one of those works, only the DeWalt one, um, and recently it lost the speed control on it, so I'm a little disappointed there, uh, but I would still recommend DeWalt tools. They're still very good, and I think uh, if I just talk to them about that, they'll get that replaced. Uh, but anyway, uh, right here you can see some more stuff like my jigsaw and random orbital sander. Those are both great tools. I would recommend those both. Um, and having both of those tools is really nice. Now, next shelf is kind of some miscellaneous stuff. Some stuff from my old router table, some stuff from a little motor thing that I had, some paste wax, um, and some uh, DeWalt. Uh, bit sets and uh, screw driving sets for the drill. Uh, now, below that, I made this little thing out of another Reclaim 2x4, and that holds all my drill bits. Now, you can't really see it because it's behind that uh, sander there, uh, the belt sander, but there are a whole bunch of drill bits on there, uh, and that comes in handy too. Now, over here, you can see I have my DeWalt uh, charger, an extra DeWalt battery, and then another charger for some cheap... Chinese drill that I had that doesn't work anymore and I, I don't even know where it is. Uh, but uh, that's about the shelving and then also over here you can see I've got a little paper towel holder uh, and on the side of the shelving is some small miter gauges which you can see right there uh, for the router table and the bandsaw. Alright, now next here you can see my belt disc sander. Now I never used the disc sander because this only came with one table uh, and that's one of the things that I don't like about this. I wish it came with two tables it didn't, and this is probably the only tool that I bought that I wouldn't recommend. It's just, you know, it does the job, but it's super flimsy. I don't think it's going to last very long. It's super underpowered, um, so I wouldn't recommend that. But it is really nice to have a belt disc sander. Now, next over here, you can see my miter saw, and a lot of you know I really like this saw. Uh, it works really good for what I need it for. Um, you know, it may not be for everybody, but for me, I really like it. Now, on the side of that, I have this uh, miter saw extension piece uh, that I made, and this was just kind of uh, something that was simple, quick, made out of scrap, 
uh, that sort of thing. It was kind of a project that's just nice to have, and I didn't really want to put too much effort into it. Uh, and that works out pretty good, and it also holds my Forstner bits on a little drawer on the bottom there. Now going below this workbench down there, you can see my little air compressor. I hardly use that. I use the big one uh, up in the garage, the 20-gallon one. Uh, and uh, next to that, you can see some scrap wood that's just kind of reclaimed or small pieces of plywood. Next to that, uh, that lower bottom bin is my scrap bin, uh, and that works out okay. I would like to improve that someday. Uh, and on the top of that uh, is just scrap electronics, I guess. Uh, I've got all sorts of different metal and stuff in there and electronics and anything I think I need uh, that's not woodworking uh, related goes up there. Now next to that is the trash, which I need to take out. I've got some, uh, I've got a big or I got part of a computer in the top there, uh, and that's about all for down there. And then also over there in the corner, you can see my Dust Deputy Cyclone, which, if you follow the um, hose up, goes to my new hanging vacuum. Uh, now, this vacuum used to be under the bench uh, that's right here. Uh, it used to be right there where that spare router table is, but I took that... Um, spare router table off from the top of the table, put it down there because I don't need it anymore. I've got a new one and I decided to save some space uh, by hanging that one up there. Now here's what you just saw. Uh, this workbench, this is the one that I made in one of my uh, first videos on this channel. One of the first videos. It wasn't the first, but it was one of the early ones. Uh, right here, the router table. Um, uh, old vice that was given to me, so it's not super secure on that bench right now. I don't really have a good place to secure it, uh, but it works out okay. Uh, and then down there is just a milk crate with a extension cord and stuff like that in there, and also there's another little bin with some miscellaneous stuff. Now up on top here, right now I don't really have anything to go over here. I might take the belt disc sander and put that there, uh, but for now I just have the bandsaw on here, and that works out pretty good, and I'm starting to put some of my stickers on um, my bandsaw, which I really like this bandsaw. This is probably the only tool that I don't have a single complaint about. It's small, but I paid for it being small, and I knew that it was going to be small, and I wanted it small so it would fit in my shop. So I really don't have any complaints about this, so I can highly recommend this bandsaw. Uh, and it works for what I need it for, and I think I'm going to start putting some stickers on that, uh, any sort of stickers that I get. Uh, and down here, um, you can see the lower part of the bandsaw, and next over here is the table saw. So I'm going to move the camera and show you this. All right, now here you can see the table saw, uh, and I really like this tool as well. Uh, this works for what I need it for. It's got a couple complaints, uh, but uh, it's still a great saw, great price point, uh, and all of that. Uh, I built the outfeed table, which is in the back there, and the router table, which is in the side, which we'll take a look, uh, a better look at in a minute. Uh, now, again, I really like this saw. I made the uh, zero clearance insert there. Uh, down here, oh, also I like the uh, fence on this, it works pretty good. Now down here I'll just show you the lower part of the saw. There's really nothing underneath it for storage other than this part of the router table. I really like this cutout in the router table and in the back there there's a little quick easy spline jig that I made uh, just for putting splines in a project. And also the miter gauge is down there and an extra blade. Uh, and so next I'm going to show you um, this router table. Alright, now finally I have the router table here. Now up on top I have an insert uh, for the router and also this will allow me to put a router lift in uh, someday if I want to. Uh, over here I have um, uh, this little chute thing that catches the sawdust if you're cutting a groove. So I really like this. I've never seen another uh, router table with this feature so I really like that. Uh, now. Uh, that's about the top, so let's go down to the bottom here in the drawers. Now, these three drawers over here are for router bits, and uh, the other ones don't have anything in them yet. Uh, this is just a temporary door. I only have one hinge on it right now. I thought I had two, but I only have one, uh, so this isn't really working out that well right now. i got to get another hinge for that. This is a false front along with this for the switch, and this is just to make room for the uh, catch vacuum thing up here on top and this big drawer on the bottom which is really nice uh, because this allows me to just store a lot of stuff um, that I don't want out. 
So, uh, and as you can see, not having a um, another hinge on that's a real problem. But anyway, that's about the extent of my shop. Uh, so, uh, if you liked this video, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. Now, thanks for watching and have a good day.